Hey everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight TV edition. I am Peter, that is Tim. We are working our way through Tales from the Crypt, the original HBO anthology series. And this is going to be season 4, episode 12. It is called Strung Along. So full spoilers for the episode as always. As always, as always, as always. As, 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 uh, so, yeah. So what is what is Strung Along about? Strung Along is about an old puppeteer who had a heart attack. So now he's, he's kind of a shut-in at home. He's reliving his glory days. He's watching his old his old programs. Where he used to have a kids' TV show, and he is uh, you know he's, he's he's trying to recover and he's not going so well. But he gets a letter. He gets a letter telling him that this this TV station are doing a, a reunion show. They're doing like a, a you know golden oldies. Uh, they want all these people back in for a little spot each. And he's all excited. He's going to do his thing again, and he starts working on it. And he's got a wife who cares for him deeply. And she is uh, notably younger, because I actually didn't think it was his wife at first. There's a scene at the start where he hears like people in a pool, and he goes o- over to his window, and he's like watching them get out of the pool, and I thought, this is a bit pervy. And then I was actually surprised when she waved and said, hi, honey. I'm like, oh, it's his wife. Okay. Uh, I thought it was pervy on the neighbours. But, um, so she's there. He ha- he hires this new helper, this young guy, uh, played by Zach Galligan from Gremlins, mm-hmm. to come in and help him work on this new puppet routine that he's going to do for this reunion show. And that's the plot of the episode. Uh, well, it's most of the plot of the episode. Obviously, there's uh, stuff where it goes, it goes elsewhere. Uh, of course, the horror element I left out is that he talks to one of his main puppets, uh, Coco. He uh, he keeps talking to it, and Coco is, you know, kind of a, a bad influence on him. <laughs> so, with that said, Tim, yeah, did you enjoy Strung Along? Uh, I enjoyed about four percent of it. <laughs> I uh, I like the ending, but the rest I thought was so boring. Um, I I really didn't care about the characters. Uh, I like Zach Galligan, you know, big Gremlins fan. Uh, it was nice to see him, but I don't know. It was there really wasn't much there? Um, yeah, the uh, the ending's cool, but it's like the last you know couple of minutes, and the rest I just thought was kind of boring. <laughs> I'm not actually in do- as down in this one as you are. I uh, mm-hmm. I didn't love it, but like I, I thought it was, it was. It's t- not the worst by far. Like I, I thought it was tight yeah. enough with what what it was doing. I didn't feel like it wasted mm-hmm. any of its time. Like I, f- I felt like everything was either telling you about this guy and who he is and what, where he is in life, uh, and it sets up the kind of the main sort of central conflict, which is the way he feels like she can't have any friends and it you know we start to think maybe she's having an affair at this acting class and it's kind of teasing that throughout the big twist of course is that Zach Galligan's character is the affair and they they're sta- I, I, I mean I'm, I'm sorry but if you didn't see that coming like a mile oh, of course. away <laughs> of, of course uh, but they're, they're like staging fights like she's acting like she doesn't like him very much but then the whole ruse is that they're planning on trying to like, give him a heart attack again to kill him so they can yeah. be together and get all his money without being convicted of anything or so not which involves him uh remote control retrolling uh, Coco and making it look like Coco stabbed her and which makes him kill over at the end and mm-hmm. uh, but then of course the real Coco because I think for most of the episodes you're thinking, oh, it's just in his head. This is just his like own demented kind of like schizophrenia talking to him. But no, at the end of the episode, Coco actually comes alive and uh, kills both the wife and Zach Galligan and like strings them up like puppets for the police to find, uh, which is the part you liked, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was all cool. And then, you know, seeing uh, Coco stabbing, um, you know, Ellen uh, was cool, even if it was fake. And then. Yeah, I mean that whole like last four or five minutes. Uh, I was like, oh, okay, this is, you know, this is kind of like the classic tales from the crypt. Like, oh, hey, um, you know, the the new young guy and young girl are lovers that you know is trying to take this guy for his money, and then they're getting their just desserts. Like that stuff was great. Um, I just, I know, I didn't feel much, you know, leading up to it. Um, I, don't I, mean, know, I, I thought I had kind of a creepy, kind of. You know, whenever Coco would talk to him, then you'd hear the sound of his heart beating. You kind of felt like it was ticking down. Like I didn't love the episode, but I I thought it was like pretty. It was it was pretty serviceable in everything that it was doing. Like it, it I I don't feel like it whiffed in anything, super, in, in any sort of great way. Like I think there's certain episodes you can look at and go, "That was horrible." What the hell were they thinking? Whereas okay. this this I feel like there was there's a decent idea. They executed it well enough, mm-hmm. and everything kind of worked, and it fed into. I think ultimately, what you're saying is, is it ended up being meh for most of it for you. Yeah, like 
it's definitely not bad. Like, I don't think there is anything that was, you know, done that poorly. It's just, it's one of those ones that it's like so, you know, mediocre, so kind of down the line that it's just like, eh, you know, like like we say before, for a lot of stuff, you know, sometimes you, you prefer extremes. Like, you know, even if it's not going to be good, it's like, well, at least if it's like really bad, it'll have my attention or something. And yeah, when it's just kind of right down the middle, it's, I don't know, doesn't do much for you. But um, yeah, and also probably didn't help. I was watching this really, really late at night, really, really tired. <laughs> like, uh, so, you know, when you're like struggling to stay awake and... I did the opposite. Yeah. I, I, I watched this immediately after I woke up. <laughs> so I was potentially just as sleepy, but it was the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> uh, you know, w- w- watching it and just kind of like... Uh, you know, taking it in, and uh, yeah. to to his credit, I, I don't think it, like I I don't think it ever feels like uh, it's not getting its points across. Like if you, sure. you, I think as you're watching it, like it's not being too on the nose with some stuff. Or like like I feel yeah. like I, I feel like some episodes with this same plot might have tried, to, like might might have been really kind of on the nose with, uh, okay, like yeah. with the puppet talking to him and where that was going or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that it's like a super surprising or shocking or anything like that. It's not like, mm-hmm. like you say, you, you see the affair and what the affair is coming like a mile off. It's just like, I mean, when you're watching Tales from the Crypt, if you see an older person with a younger person, instantly you know that, all right, they're going to die and that person's going to try to get their money and there'll probably be a, a younger lover involved. Probably. Probably, it's, uh, I feel like it's, it's almost a. Uh, it's uh, par for the course at this point. We're, we're we're past cliche, we're past trope, we're we're just in. It doesn't feel right if every third episode doesn't have some love triangle of some kind <laughs> trying to screw someone out of money or some some marriage for money gone awry. Yeah, I guess last week was kind of a twist on that, having you uh, twins. It was still a love triangle, Actually, though, technically. Yeah. <laughs> it was a new, a new spin on it, but it was still kind of in that in, in that realm. Mm. Uh, they really like to do that in the show. <laughs> uh, the puppet was okay. Uh, I'll be honest, I, I thought you were going to love this episode when it started, because I was like, oh, he loves the boy, so he's going to love all these puppets. <laughs> I do like my creepy puppets, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this was definitely not boy level. <laughs> yeah, it was better. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I'm actually kind of been sitting there. I wasn't really thinking about it, but yeah, I'm actually kind of serious. This is better than the boy. No, no way. Easy. Not at all. Absolutely nope. easy. Uh, actually, <laughs> no I did want to call out one really creepy shot that I, I actually genuinely really liked. Is uh, it's, it's it's just after he's gotten the letter and he's like, "Oh, we're going to have to hire someone." And it's when uh, David is first entering like, his workshop. It's like mm-hmm. the, the sh- it starts in the room with, 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 without anyone in it, and it's just sort of looking at the window. But you just see the feet of some puppets hanging in the foreground, and it lo- oh, yeah. it legitimately looks like children have hung themselves. Like that, that's that, that's what it looks like in the frame until you realise it's puppets, uh, yeah. and that was genuinely really really creepy. And I thought, yeah. oh, okay, all right, that was, that was inventive. I, I, I give you that. Yeah, that was a cool two seconds of the episode. <laughs> <sighs> I, I don't think it was that bad. Like I, I'm defending it because you're being so harsh because I feel like I need to try and balance this, but I don't actually like it's fine. It, like it's a decent decent enough little episode that's not going to think- set your world on fire. I think it's like I think it's okay, but it's on the lower level of okay. I think there are better okay episodes than this one. Sure. I would say <laughs> I would say if you're I mean, if you're you know, watching the whole series, I, I think, you know, then it, it's fine or whatever. If you're if you're someone who's skipping around and only wants to watch like, you know, good memorable episodes, I think this is a skippable one. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, sure, it's not memorable. Like you know, when we when we rank, well, not all the episodes, but when we do like a top ten or top whatever at the end of this, when we finish the whole show, yeah, sure, this has no chance of being yeah. on that top ten or twenty or whatever we end up doing. But like, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> like I don't I like. There's some episodes <laughs> where I finish it and go, "Oh, that was a waste of time." Whereas this, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, that was like." You know, a nice afternoon kind of waste of twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. You know, like it was a better waste of time. 
yeah yeah like, what, in what, terms what, of wastes of time it was on the better <laughs> end of it like I you know you. There's, there's some things where you finish you go oh, that was a waste of my time how dare they and then there's other times where you go yeah. oh, that was a decent way to kill 25 minutes you weren't offended by yeah exactly yes yeah. It, I, I, I am not bothered by existing like the boy in which case I am very much bothered by existence well, all our lives have been made better by that movie. But, I mean, uh, with this one, at least it does have a decent ending. Like, I, I like the ending enough to not totally, you know, throw this out in, uh, on Garbage Day. Garbage Day. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, the, the ending is cool. I can't. I'll definitely give it up for that. Are we done? Is that as funny? Is it 10 minutes? <laughs> Do you have anything else to say about it? <laughs> I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, see, there's, there's not a lot like oh, to it, really. The wife, uh, Patricia Charbonneau, uh, to please her. Good job. Uh, I actually, I was like, what did I know her from? And I, I, when I looked her up, I think I know her from uh, Robocop 2. <laughs> oh okay all right uh, oh she was also in manhunter uh so i i will know her from that as well but I, I don't remember who she is in that i need to watch manhunter again i love that movie uh yeah me too it's been a while she was also in she's all that not that i uh <laughs> not, not, i only seen that one so a uh, long long time ago so it's not exactly one that i would uh i'd remember so much oh, fair enough. uh she appears to be retired though she's not made anything in a while <laughs> but uh, she's the scientist lady in robocop 2 for anyone who uh <laughs> for anyone. not the worst sequel I, I don't hate Robocop 2 I, yeah, it's, uh, it's enjoyable uh, I mean hell it, it, it looks absolutely fantastic compared to Robocop 3 yeah. <laughs> although amazingly it says here she was uncredited in Robocop 2 which is bizarre because I remember her from it which is weird that mm. she's uncredited in That's fact interesting. the second photo on her IMDB page is her in Robocop 2 hmm and she has a speaking role. Why is she uncredited? That's weird. I feel like there's some dodgy business going on there with the Robocop 2 credits. The Actors Guild needs to get involved. <laughs> there's something yeah, we'll, going on. We'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll sort it out. We'll, we'll do it. Check it out on next episode of Movie Mysteries. <laughs> we really got to dig deep into that one. Stop promising them things, Tim, that we're never going to deliver on. <laughs> I don't want angry tweets and emails in a week. Like, where's, where's, where's this mystery show? <laughs> Tim promised us a mystery show. <laughs> he also promised us goats and other things. <laughs> Only if you're good. I keep a list. <laughs> oh, who are we kidding? You keep all the goats to yourself. <laughs> I haven't met anyone else that's worthy enough. Yeah, we'll have to do wax work one and two at some point on the on the regular show because oh love waxwork i've never seen it and zach gilligan's in it so <laughs> good good movies good uh, fun 80s monster movies yeah <laughs> i'm sorry yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm reading his credits i'm just seeing what else he's been, he's been in recently he was in hatchet three he's... apparently i think he's been in more than you realize i mean he is the gremlins guy i mean <laughs> and that's <laughs> that's what he's gonna be known for but i think he has a nice decent little resume yeah, yeah. I'd, ha- I'd hire him. It's funny, actually, I was watching the, the Deuce uh, when it was on recently. Uh, mm-hmm. The HBO show from the creators of The Wire. It's good stuff if you like your uh, your sort of serious drama stuff. I do not. <laughs> um, okay, you, you may not like it. But do you know who showed, <laughs> showed up on it? Uh, and it James took, Franco? It took me a sec. James Franco is in it, but that's not who I'm talking about. Okay. Someone showed up in a small role, and I'm like, I know that face. And do you know who it was? It was the Karate Kid. It was Ralph Macchio, oh, but of okay. course, but of course he's like fifty now because <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh look, he looks good for his age though. You you wouldn't necessarily peg him at fifty. Yeah. He's the sort of guy you look at and go, he's in his mid thirties. Oh, all right. And you karate can tell this episode. This episode wasn't that interesting because we're talking about <laughs> Karate Kid being in the deuce. Uh, yeah, hey, I mean, you, you love the episode and yet you can barely find I didn't love the episode. It. I thought it was okay. <laughs> I thought it was fine. I just thought you were a bit of a harsh. I like to say the ending was kind of fun. <laughs> the ending was good. Again, I will give it up. They get strung up like puppets. That's pretty cool. You know, and I, I thought the old guy was not unlikable. Like, I, I thought he was doing enough where I'm like, hey, he's, he's a good he's, actor. He's kind of nice. So. So, yeah. Yeah. I I do like the comps at the end. They're like, "Oh man, this is a this is a grisly scene." He's like, "I can handle." I was like, "You ain't never seen anything like this." And it's like, 
And it's just people strung up like it wasn't that gory or anything. It was weird, but yeah, yeah. Also, <laughs> I, I like that the crypt keeper started the episode and like he was in like chains on a table. Yeah, oh re- yeah. <laughs> re- ready for like some kinky sex stuff. That was that was a uh, deeply amusing. But hey, I, I, it would be kind of cool as if they did like a Gotham Central type show, but in the Tales from the Crypt universe, <laughs> where it's just like all the cops that like are investigating this stuff afterwards. Yeah, for for, the, for folk who don't know what Gotham Central is, it's a, a comic book series set in Gotham, and it's the you follow like, a few police detectives in the city. Now you're probably thinking, what you mean, like the show Gotham? Not really, <laughs> because. There's no the whole point is is that you're, you're Gotham Central's while Batman exists, but Batman's not in the show or in the in the book that much. I mean, he pops up occasionally for a cameo, but it's all about how the how the cops deal with all the uh, the crazy villains. Which, admittedly, I know the show Gotham is getting into that territory because they they're, they're using every single Batman villain before he's even Batman. He's basically barely hit puberty, and like Mister Freeze is running around. Yeah. Uh, I hate that. I ha- I've, I've there, seen from the five episodes of that show I watched. I hated it with a passion. Yeah. So there's no sexy penguin in uh, Gotham Central. You think the penguin from the uh, show is sexy? <laughs> I, I think the internet has a, a little fixation on him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, I could be wrong. But there's, I, a, there's also I've seen no people that dig it. Balloon Man in the in the comic book series either. For the record, <laughs> I forgot about Balloon Man. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Do you know how much it bothers me that, that, you know, 15 years before Bruce became Batman, there was a guy in Gotham going around calling himself Balloon Man? It kind of dilutes the whole effect of Batman becoming Batman. Yeah. Either. Well, well, you know, whatever. Anyway. Yeah, that's not the best, but I mean, if we get, uh, I mean, if Tom King decides he wants to, you know, revamp Balloon Man <laughs> in the comics, I, I'd be for that. I think we're done, Tim. I think that's uh, strung up, finished, and done, talked about. So uh, we'll wrap this up here. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, let us know what you thought of the, the episode of Tales from the Crypt in the comments below. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. Get us on Twitter at mailed underscore fuzz for channel updates. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash mailfuzzTV. There's a link in the corner and a link in the description. And over there, you can uh, support us and get some bonuses. But getting these reviews a week early, which, of course, you want because we go off topic and start talking about Gotham and... <laughs> uh, what uh, the karate kid's up to uh, but there you go that is us so thank you once again for watching keep watching scary tv guys we will see you next time